Welcome everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth and I'm a flight attendant for a major US carrier. So it is cold out today. It's like minus three. It's February 3rd today. And I am going out on a three day trip. I leave, I have to leave the house in two hours. So I gotta do something with this, but it's freezing today. I'm also bidding for my March schedule. I have vacation in March and vacation in April. March is my birthday month. And so, yeah, I'm working on my bid, trying to get stuff taken up, taking, um, trying to get stuff done around the house. And then I will head out to the airport. So for parents out there, moms and dads, what do you do with, I mean, a thousand, all the papers, all the things. I mean, everything, all the things from, I don't know, does it get better? So Hannah's in kindergarten. Does it get better? Does there are less stuff that comes home from school? But um, I do a pretty good job throwing stuff away. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to be practical on how much of it I keep. Um, but what do you guys suggest? How do you guys store it? What do you guys do with it? <sighs> Yeah, but I'm gonna work a little bit on my bid and then I'm gonna go get ready and then we'll head out to the airport. It's winter. I'm gonna see if I can break out the boots this year. Um, I bought fleece lined leggings, but I cannot find them. But look, these are my pretty woman boots because I have to get something because the zipper broke. So let's see if I can get these on. It's so bright out, so I've got my husband's glasses I think he got free at a convention so starting a three-day like I said earlier we end up in um, Rhode Island tonight and I thought for this video since a lot of people have been applying for airlines I thought maybe I would pepper in some questions that you should be prepared for if you're interviewing for flight attendant now everybody's interview is going to be personal and specific to them so I can't promise you these are going to be the questions but I thought it would be, you might be interested in knowing some of the things they might ask you in an interview. So the first thing I would recommend, highly recommend if you are applying for any position, but for an airline is know some information about the airline you are applying for. Um, my airline, there are several books written about my airline. Just know their history, maybe know their mission statement, know something about the carrier that you're applying for. And because they're most likely going to ask you, Question number one, why do you wanna work for this airline? So be prepared to answer that question. That would be some great information to know ahead of time. Why that airline? Why have you selected that airline? And you very well may be interviewing at several carriers, but know about the carrier that you're interviewing for because um, you never know what kind of questions will come up and you might be able to pepper some history or some interesting facts into the conversation and just, um, you know, make yourself stand out from someone who just doesn't know anything about that carrier. So that is question or tip number one. Let's head in. All right, so I just had to swap out my caribou drink three times. I feel bad. Um, they were out of cold brew at the carts that I normally go to and they were out of cold brew upstairs at the normal restaurant. Um, they gave me like the last of the cold brew until like the bottom was all grounds. And so I was like, hey, can I switch this out? And the cart, since it's a Caribou Einstein combined thing, they sell vanilla hazelnut drip, just black drip, hot coffee. Well, it was me and a miscommunication with the barista and she was kind and she made me a vanilla hazelnut latte, but I'm not eating sugar this month. And so um, I was like, ah, I could drink this or I could just see if they'll swap it out. And so I came out to the concourse and they swapped it out for me for just plain cold brew on ice and I traded them my hot drink. So I wasn't like trying to get two drinks out of it. So that was super kind of caribou. Way to fix it, love it. Um, but yeah, I'm just waiting for my flight. No plane yet. First flight to Charlotte. On the plane, 
boarding is going to start in a few minutes. And yeah, I'm so glad I wore boots today. I did get them zipped up. Um, I do, <laughs> I do have to use something to pull the zipper up. So I feel super like I'm like pretty woman because the zipper broke off, but I'm so glad I wore boots because the parking lot is so slushy because we got snow and it's kind of melting. And so, um, keep my feet dry, but 800 going to Charlotte. We're not completely full today, about 40 empty seats. And then we go to Baltimore and then end up in Providence, Rhode Island. So let's do this flight number one. We're in Baltimore. One more to go to Providence. I'm done today. I'm just tired. I'm ready to go to my hotel room and heat up some food and I don't know, I'm done today. But it's been a good day, it hasn't been hard. Um, loads have been light. We have an hour here in Baltimore. Didn't realize that we had a whole hour, but so we're just chilling on the plane, hanging out. We've got four through passengers. So my airline does through flights. So the people who got on in Charlotte, we stopped in Baltimore, they stay on the plane and then they come with us to Providence. So just hanging out in the back. Made it, made it to the hotel. I am tired. I am starving and I'm ready for bed. My feet hurt. So the boots were awesome because my feet didn't get wet walking in from the parking lot, but I cannot remember if I bought these boots before I had Hannah. So, cause my feet got bigger and I'm gonna have to start shopping for new boots, but yeah. Time for food. I'm so excited because there is a microwave um, on our floor. So, bam, elevators, bam, hallway, microwave. So, that's awesome because otherwise we had would have had to go down to the lobby to use the microwave and this way I can just, you know, I got my slippers on and come out here and use the microwave and go back to my room. Dinner was yummy, which is good because I tried something new and I was a little nervous because I was hungry. So I am watching Scandal, sitting in the bed and I was freaking out. I was, well, I was panicking because I forgot my charger for my, um, I forgot my little portable battery. Um, this phone has really good battery life, but shooting video on it does drain the battery so I was panicking and I was like, okay, I can make this work. I can live without a battery backup. But then I was like, oh, I think I'm one charger cord down. And that's all because we went to Virginia Beach to um, celebrate my stepdaughter's 11th birthday last weekend. And I, you know, kind of unpacked and repacked and I was worried I didn't um, have everything, but good news. I found my portable charger and another wire so I can get everything charged up tonight. Um, okay. So tip number two or question that you should probably be prepared for is how do you deal with conflict? <clears throat> so a lot of our job is diffusing a situation or situations that could turn into conflict. So they're going to ask you how you are at resolving conflict. They might ask you for an example of a time that you have diffused a conflict or been in the middle of a conflict and how you dealt with it. That's with passengers and also with fellow employees. So as a flight attendant, it's kind of a weird job. Most jobs, you have a supervisor who checks your work. As a flight attendant, we are pretty much out on line they call it on the line, on our own. We, in my airline, the A is the lead flight attendant, but she's not the boss. They set the tone and they kind of, they kind of set the pace for how things go, but they're not my boss. So we have ways that if you have a flight attendant who's doing something that's not correct, you can report them through, um, it's like ethical standards. So you, if you see something that's like a safety issue, primarily a safety issue, you can go ahead and there's ways to um, report that so that they can be talked to or it can be looked into. 
but for the most part, we are online without supervisors. Now, supervisors do do ghost rides to audit you. That's another topic for another day, but they're going to ask you about conflict, how you deal with conflict with other employees and how you deal conflict deal with conflict with passengers. So, that's another tip or trick or question that you might come up in an in-flight interview. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow. Welcome to day two. So it is yucky outside. It is raining. Ew, David. And so, so far, it seems like all of our flights are about 45, minute, 45 minutes late. So, and also for some reason, I'm now deadheading on our first flight. And I think that's because we originally were supposed to be on an 800, which takes four flight attendants. And now we're on a 700, which takes three flight attendants. So I think... I'll confirm this when we get to the airport that I am deadheading because, well, I am the most senior, so they're having me deadhead. And then the person who was supposed to fly the D position um, is taking my position since we only need three of us. So I think that's what's happening. We're about 45 minutes late on all of our flights today. The weather I, on the East Coast, at least here, is bad. Um, it's rainy. Nothing so dramatic that I think any cancellations will happen. Just slowing 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 things down so um yeah that's what's happening i got my waffle and i got my coffee mm. and i need to be downstairs in an hour so i need to get my self in high gear and get my face on and all that jazz oh i was gonna tell you a story so last night um i stayed up you know, till two, which was like midnight Colorado time. And I was just dinking around. I was hungry. I ate and I watched some scandal because I'm working my way through that again. And then I went to turn the air on and my thermostat didn't work. So I called down to the front desk and she's like, okay, well, it took me forever to get through to her. Um, and then um, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to have security reset it from here. It should take 10 or 15 minutes. And then the, you know, the system should come back on line. So I sat down and I was waiting and then she called me back. She was like, no, actually your system, I have to send somebody up. I have to send maintenance up to reset it manually. Um, are you okay with that? And I was like, yeah. And so I um, put a bra back on <laughs> and let um, him in and he had to like open a compartment that's over here by the, the air and cooling system and he did something and he's like, well, that should take 10 or 15 minutes. Well, it never came back on. And in fact, it shows error on the thermostat face right now. So I was like, for me, it was cute because he came in. He's like, oh, are you trying to turn the heat on? I was like, actually, I'm trying to turn the air on. We usually keep our house at like 66 degrees at night. So we like it pretty dang cold. Um, but since it was chilly here and I could feel that it was chilly um, come, you know, there was chill coming through the windows. I called, I called down and told them that the system did not reset. It didn't come on. And she offered me a different room, but I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to stay put. Cause I, I was going to have to like empty out the refrigerator. It just at 2 AM at that point, 2 15, I just didn't want to go through the rigmarole of changing rooms. So I was fine. I wasn't too hot and I wasn't too cold. It was just right. So but I did let her know so they can make sure to have maintenance fix this room for someone who um, will want to turn the heat on because I'm a weirdo and like it cold. <laughs> so um, tip number three, idea of question you're going to get in an interview is why do you want to be a flight attendant? Why? What is, so you need to come up with three to five solid good reasons, probably three, that you want to be a flight attendant. So if you're going to interview for a flight attendant, make sure you know why you wanna do it. Um, and that's different and personal for everybody out there. 
So that would be my tip for what I would think would be a question in an in-flight interview. Why do you wanna be a flight attendant? Now it's time for this flight attendant to go ahead and get dressed. I sit in a seat like a passenger because we originally, like I said, we needed four flight four flight attendants. Now we only need three. I'm the most senior, so I'm gonna sit in a seat to Baltimore. Turns out we're the last flight to get out of Providence before um, I think it's gonna be getting cold and icy. So we're the last flight out, and then we go to Tampa and Milwaukee. So let's go. to Tampa. We are full to Tampa and yeah, it's rainy here, but, and we all wish that we could stay in Tampa, but then we'll be on to Milwaukee. All six of us, four flight attendants and the pilots are all going to Milwaukee. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. So the sinking feeling when you realize that you left a bag on your inbound flight, it's the worst, it's the worst. I just, normally I have the bag I left behind inside my backpack, but I didn't have my red jacket on, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have room. And I just realized it when I went to get something to eat out of it, that I don't have it. The plane is still here. Cross our fingers. Maybe one of the pilots will run over. It's just not super close. Fudge. Crap, 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 crap. <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep you posted. All right, day two is in the books and I'm in the hotel. It's dark, so I'm standing outside the bathroom. Um, I didn't get my food bag back. We got off that plane and it was gonna be sitting on the ground for a really long time, so they sealed it for security. So they couldn't get anyone on to get my little food bag off, so I've gotta make some phone calls tomorrow. See if I can find it. The only reason I really want it back um, is because the bag was gifted to me from my neighbors. So when I, have when I had breast cancer, they all got me this bag and it's embroidered and it says Team Elizabeth on it and it has the breast cancer um, ribbon on it. So that's why I want it back. So I'm gonna f um, get changed, heat up my food. And I brought my computer so I could edit another vlog and be productive, but I just, <laughs> I just want to sit on my butt and watch Hulu. I did bid, I finished bidding, and so I have vacation in March and vacation in April, and I had to go through so many lines to bid, and so I bid like 721 lines, schedule, a line is a schedule. Um, my seniority, I'm number 802 or 820 out of 2049, so I had to bid a lot of lines, so yeah. All right, I'm gonna get changed, I'm starving. I'm so happy to be sitting in my room on my heating pad, eating. <laughs> oh, and then I was going to tell you, 
share with you another tip for interviewing for flight attendant. Be yourself. Um, airlines hire all different kinds of people. Some people are introverts, some people are extroverts. Just be yourself in the interview and um, just let your personality come through. Obviously, if you wanna be a flight attendant, you wanna help people, I'm assuming. Um, but just be yourself. I think that would be a tip. It's not an exact specific question, but just be genuinely who you are. That's my tip for right now. Dressed, ready to go down. It is about 117. I think that's what it says. Something like that. <laughs> we have to be downstairs at 130, ready to go down. So I made some Instagram reels and I put one up and I'm going to start sharing those to the shorts feature of my channel, but they're kind of fun to do. So day three, go home day. Let's get out of here. I'm home. I already have comfy soft clothes on and I wanted to close out the vlog and give you one more question to consider before in-flight interviews. Um, so our flights were awesome. Nothing difficult. Um, I gave one of my um, fellow um, flight attendants a ride to the hotel. She's an Austin commuter and she's good for one more day tomorrow. So I drove her to the hotel uh, so she didn't have to wait for the shuttle. And so that's why I didn't end the vlog um, in the airport. But my last question to consider before you go to an in-flight interview is commuting. There is a very big possibility that you are going to end up commuting when you become a flight attendant. So that means that you, like let's say, so I'm Denver based. If I didn't live in Denver, like for example, this girl that I took to the hotel, she lives in Austin. So she has to commute from Austin to Denver to start her trips, to start her day, to start her three days. So it's a really good chance that you will have to com commute when you become a flight attendant. You can move to base and if that's a possibility for you, then do it. But really consider if you'd be able to handle commuting and how that would work into your life. So that will probably be a question. So I will see you guys in the sky. I'll see you next time.